Okay, so I believe we're now live. So welcome everyone to StrimsyCon. It's the first ever StrimsyCon, so we're really excited to have you here. And we've got a great afternoon or morning or wherever you are for you. So today we have got a whole bunch of great sessions. To be exact, we've got eight sessions with 11 speakers from six different organizations. So that's over five hours worth of content for you. Unfortunately, it's all going to be recorded, so you'll be able to watch all of it if you wish. But before we get into our content, we've got some thanks. So first of all, a massive thank you to the program committee who have worked really hard to review all the sessions that were submitted and pick the ones that you're going to be seeing today. Um, my name is Kate Stanley. I'm here with Paolo Patierno. We are, of course, on the programme committee and we're also hosting you today. So if you at any point have any questions or there's something not clear around the tool, then please do reach out and DM us through Bevy to get some help. Um, but yeah, we're, we're just really excited to be here. And of course, we couldn't have an event without our amazing speakers. So thank you so much to all of the speakers who are going to be here today. They've put in a lot of time, not just submitting the sessions, but also giving up their time to present today. So make the most of them being here. All of them are either using Strimsy or contributing to Strimsy in some way. So use their expertise, reach out, get to know them and uh, yeah, engage with them. So before we get into some other content, let's talk about what we're all here for, which is, of course, running Apache Kafka on Kubernetes. So for those of you who have never heard of Kafka or Strimsy or anything before, Kafka is, of course, an open source distributed event streaming platform. It lets you publish and subscribe to streams of events scalably and reliably store events and react events as they occur in real time. And one of the most popular ways to deploy Kafka is, of course, on Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is an open source system for automating the deployment, scaling and the management of containerized applications. And it's a very popular choice for deploying Kafka and it, it works really well. But there are quite a lot of things that you have to think about when you're deploying Kafka on Kubernetes. It's complex. You must deploy and run the cluster. So whether that's the Kafka cluster or perhaps Kafka Connect, you need to apply configuration changes, whether that's dynamic configuration changes or perhaps having to actually restart your Kafka brokers. You need to think about upgrades. The Kafka community is so vibrant and always bringing out new releases. So you need to actually make use of those new releases and those new features. And of course, you need to secure it as well. And many more things that you might not have thought of. And so that is where Strimsy comes in. So Strimsy simplifies the process of running Apache Kafka on Kubernetes. And it provides these sort of three foundational things. It's secure by default. It's simple yet configurable, and it provides a Kubernetes native experience using Kubernetes operators. So for today, to start off with, I'm going to hand over to Paolo, who is one of the Strimsy maintainers, and he's going to talk about how Strimsy came about and some new features that you might not have heard of and what we might see in the future. Yeah, thank you, Kate. So. For people who didn't know about Streamzy, now you know about Streamzy, how to run Apache Kafka on Kubernetes. And uh, it's great that I guess that uh, many people uh, already knew what Streamzy is. But let's start with a little bit of history around Streamzy, so how we ended here, right? So about the past. So Streamzy was born in 2017. Uh, it was created by a team from Red Hat, uh, so from um, uh, so engineers from Red Hat and uh, with a different name. So it was not named Streamzy, it was Barnabas in the past, but then we decided to move to this name. Uh, the first release was in January 2018, but uh, at that time it was, um, so it was providing just Docker images with uh, Kafka upstream and a bunch of YAML files in order to deploy the stateful set needed for running the brokers and Zookeeper and um, the config map for configuration and things like that. But 
we decided to move uh, to adopt the operator pattern later on in March 2018. So we started to write all the controllers and the stuff that we have today from scratch. And luckily, there was no um, uh, um, JDK for Java to write an operator uh, at that time. So we wrote everything from scratch. And uh, over the years, after um, multiple releases, at some point, we decided to submit uh, the project to the CNCF Foundation. And uh, StreamZ was accepted as a CNCF sandbox project in August 2019. So we started from there as part of CNCF, again, adding new features, fixing bugs, engaging with the community. So the community was really growing a lot. And we ended today with a really shiny present. So the present is that in 2024, in February, we were promoted as uh, uh, an incubating project. So today, StreamZ as part of CNCF is an incubating project. And as you can see here, there are a lot of uh, real good numbers, like more than uh, 6,000 commits on the main repo, which is about the operator. Uh, related to the operator, we had uh, 41 releases. And uh, the StreamEasy organization in GitHub is not just about uh, the cluster operator, but there are different components. There are 10 components, like, as I already mentioned, the operator, there is the HTTP bridge, uh, there is the OAuth plugin, uh, the Quota plugin, it's coming, the Kafka access operator. Yeah, because Streamers is not just one operator, the cluster one. We have also the topic and the user operator for uh, handling your topics and user in your Kafka cluster. And the Kafka access operator is coming in order to make easier to you have client configured and connecting to your Kafka cluster. And uh, of course, as part of the installation of the operator, you are getting 12 CRDs in order to extend the Kubernetes API and um, having a Kubernetes native way to deploy your Kafka instance, or uh, as I say, the Kafka topic, the Kafka user, but even more stuff, uh, which is part of the Kafka ecosystem, like Kafka Connect, Kafka Mirror Maker, and so on. But of course, nothing was possible without you. So thank you to the community. Uh, the community is really growing day by day. You can see here we have a thousand of stars on GitHub, a lot of people forking the repo and playing with StreamZ, using StreamZ. More than 3,000 members on Slack uh, who engage with us in order to ask questions, uh, um, yeah, asking for help on problems and uh, issues that they are facing. Uh, we are uh, a lot of committing organization, active contributors, and most important part, we have a lot of adopters. There are 16 here, but I would say that uh, they are more than that. So this is the official number because in StreamZ, we have these adopters file and uh, StreamZ website where you can open a PR and ask for showing and having your name as a company uh, on the website and in this list, yeah, to announce publicly that you are using StreamZ in production. So maybe out there, there are other companies uh, using StreamZ, but they are not in this list. So if you are working for one of these companies, it would be great if you could, you know, um, open the PRs, uh, engage with us and ask it to be listed as one of the adopters of StreamZ because using StreamZ in production, it would be great for the community to see how many people, users and companies are already using StreamZ. But say that, what are the main areas that we cover with, uh, with StreamZ? And what are the main new features that we had across the last year? First of all, as Kate said, StreamZ is focused on running Kafka cluster on Kubernetes, right? And Kafka, uh, during the last months, uh, has been moving from using Zookeeper for storing the metadata to the craft mode. Today, we have the support for craft mode in StreamZ. We also have the migration support, so you can migrate really easily your uh, Kafka cluster from being a Zookeeper-based cluster to be a craft-based uh, cluster. Of course, in each release, we have a new version of Kafka that we are going to support. We had some improvements on the Kafka Connect and Mirror Maker side, so improving the handling of the connectors, but even more metrics and more detailed dashboards uh, showing information about your Kafka Connect workloads and Mirror Maker as well. 
but also the topic and the user operator were kind of redesigned. So the user operator was re uh, redesigned for better performance in order to be able to handle hundreds and thousands of users. And the topic operator was changed in order to move from the bidirectional uh, mode, uh, which was the, the one in the past, to the current one, which is the unidirectional mode. And uh, we, we will have a session focused on this new unidirectional topic operator today. The other main areas are about uh, the distributed tracing support. So we are supporting today the integration with another CNCF project, which is Open Telemetry. We don't have open tracing anymore because it was archived and replaced by open telemetry. Uh, there is more integration with Chris Control in order to rebalance your cluster. Chris Control is a LinkedIn open source project for rebalancing an Apache Kafka cluster. So uh, we added the, the, the way for um, rebalancing when you add or remove brokers or uh, approve, for example, for, uh, uh, for auto approve a uh, rebalance proposal from Chris Control. Of course, across the year, several release, uh, releases for the HTTP bridge, for the OAuth plugin, and also some uh, improvements on the monitoring side. So we added and exposed uh, more metrics and also uh, improved our dashboards. Uh, it was even uh, more coming from the community where people are using Streams, so they find more uh, interesting stuff to be on the dashboards and they suggest this and they open PRs and things like that. So thank you very much for everyone for uh, improving our monitoring site. But what's the future for, for Streams, or at least what we hope will be the future for Streams? Four main uh, areas, there are a lot going on, but the four main things are First of all, I already mentioned that we have craft support and the migration from Zookeeper to craft. It's there, you can start using it. You can start to migrate your Kafka cluster. We can expect, uh, I don't know, you having issues or problems. So we are here to help you. So uh, across the next months uh, until Zookeeper will be totally removed from Kafka and you will have just craft mode. We will help the users, the community, uh, engaging with us in order to migrate, if any issues, your uh, cluster from Zookeeper to Craft. But it's really simple, so I guess you don't have any issues with that. And uh, the other step is about the other new feature that it's coming. It's a huge one. It's about um, an integration with an external certificate manager. Today, you know, Streams is going to create the TLS certificates for you, or you can provide these certificates through secrets in Kubernetes. But it would be great uh, having uh, integration with the certificate manager, like Certs Manager, for example, where you can use that component in order to generate uh, and store your secrets and then sharing them with, uh, with Streams. There is a Streams proposal for that. And uh, you can already engage with us, so um, join the discussion and see what's going on and what's coming on this side. There is also another thing around rebalancing, so the auto rebalancing on scaling up or scaling down the cluster. So you can just scale up or scale down your cluster and StreamZ will do the rebalancing for you. And finally, rolling the brokers. So rolling the brokers is an important part of StreamZ because when you make any uh, change to the configuration, any Kafka version and things like that, the brokers need to be rolled. And uh, today, the component that we will see in details with the session that we are going to have today, uh, it's possible to roll just one broker at a time, which could be not that great for huge clusters. So uh, with this new feature, you are, uh, so the operator is able to rolling more brokers in parallel, so making the rolling faster. Say that, how can you help uh, about, so on making uh, StreamZ better and better? Of course, reporting issue. So any kind of issues that you have on Slack, on GitHub, on uh, the GitHub discussions as well, you can start any discussion with us and report any problems that you are facing. Of course, you can improve the documentation, which is always the best uh, uh, st starting point where you can start using StreamZ if you find something difficult to understand, if you find even just typos or anything that could be helpful for the other people to understand how to use StreamZ. So please improve the documentation, opening PRs for that. You can, of course, join discussion of any kind and, of course, contribute to the code. 
if you want to fix uh, a bug, uh, if you found a bug and you want to fix it, if you want a new feature, let's engage with us. So ju just engage with us and open PR, adding the code. We will be really happy to review your PRs, to provide feedback, and then merge your PR so that you will have your first contribution to StreamZ uh, done. Uh, in GitHub, we have some uh, issues which are tagged as a uh, good start or help wanted. So something that it's uh, um, that you can work on and start to work on uh, on StreamZ. Of course, where you can join the conversation, I already mentioned some of them um, through the, the the this presentation. There is the website, the GitHub repo, the Twitter account where you can get all the updates uh, and news about new release as well. The Slack channel, the mailing list, and also the official YouTube channel where we have all our uh, um, community meetings or any kind of demos, uh, videos about new release of streams, this and so on. So at this point, I will back to you, Kate. Yeah, thank you. So of course, this is what we're all here for, StreamZCon. So as we said before, we've got a very packed schedule for you. So we've had Got two different rooms. So we've got the river room, which is the one you're all in now watching this keynote. And then we have the waterfall room as well. In order to switch between the rooms, you should be able to find the stages button at the top of your screen and switch. But we will, of course, be recording all of the sessions. So everything will be recorded and it should be out on both the Strimzy and the CNCF YouTube channels in sort of two weeks or so. So you don't need to be in two places at once. You can go to whichever sessions you like, and then you can always catch the recordings of the other ones. Um, we've got a wide variety in terms of both use cases and sort of internal. So definitely see if you can go to a mixture of sessions. And as we said before, make sure you connect. So during the sessions, we'll have the Q&A feature. So make sure you're asking any questions there. And either myself or Paolo will then ask those questions to the speaker at the end. But also, once the session is over, the speakers can then obviously respond to those as well. And also use the chat in Bevy to connect with the other attendees and the other speakers that are here. If you're wanting to talk about the event on social media and share that you're attending and encourage other people to attend, then use the hashtag StreamZCon 2024. And then also join the Slack channel. So if we have any discussions in the Q and A's that we run out of time during the session, what we'll do is we'll create a post over on the StreamZ Slack channel, and then we can continue having discussion under that post. So if you're wanting to continue the conversation after the end of this event, then do post there. And we've also got, I think, all of our speakers over on the Slack channel as well. So if you are watching a recording of a session in future or you think of a question tomorrow, then you can also go there and, and the speakers should be there to be able to answer any questions. So with that, our last thing to say is enjoy. We've worked really hard to pull together the content for this. Um, we hope it will be useful and informative and that you yeah, just have a great time. So what's going to happen now is we've got a 10 minute coffee break. So have a screen break, go grab a drink, and then uh, we'll meet you back in either the river room where we've got uh, upgrade yourself to the business class with Jakob Schultz, or you can go to the waterfall room with exploring Strimsy's implementation of rolling updates with Tina Selenge. So we'll see you shortly. See you. Bye. <laughs>